All right, so I have prayers for deliverance from rejection. And so I, I put on top of here about renouncing generational rejection. Now, we are going to teach a class on generational curses. So I'm, I, that's why I didn't really want to get into that. But um, so this would be the sample prayer. And I'm going to just go over it, and then we're going to pray it, okay? So in Jesus' name, I renounce a generational spirit of rejection that has been passed down to me by my ancestors. I forgive my ancestors for passing that spirit down to me, but I renounce it and reject it from my life. I, rene- I, re- I renounce all forms of rejection, fear of rejection, self-rejection, perceived rejection, and I forgot to put expected rejection, all right? And then in Jesus' name, I renounce every spirit of rejection. And then I, I, I mentioned it again. And then if you can remember, not necessarily, but if the entry points, like when, for example, when my mother told me every birthday that, um, you know, she was um, wanted me to be a boy, you know, and again, my mother didn't mean anything by it. I mean, because even when I challenged her and said something like maybe three years before she passed, she got mad at me. She goes, oh, I didn't mean it, you know. But I, I took it as personal, right? But I had to, so that particular scenario I brought before the Lord, and I truly forgave my mother. I said, Lord, I thank you that, that you planned for me to be a girl. You planned for me to be born, okay, blah, blah, blah. So, so if there's certain instances of being bullied or if there's certain instances of, you know, that you were rejected by a teacher or, or by your employer or by your husband or by your wife, you know, pray it. All right. Um, so I renounce or reject the spirit of rejection as you have no authority in my, over my life. You have each and every one of us because we are blood born redeemed. We have powerful authority over the enemy. The enemy is under our feet. I renounce and, and reject the spirit of rejection as you know. With, I read that. I, can't, I close every door against the spirit of rejection and cancel every legal right that rejection had to operate in my life. I command the spirit of inherited rejection or generational curse, fear of rejection, self-rejection, perceived rejection, expected rejection, to lose their hold on me in Jesus' name. And then the person, now see, let me just say this. You can do self-deliverance. Some people say you can't. You can, you can do self-deliverance. I've done it many times on myself. And where you take authority over the spirit. But there are times that you get stuck and you need help. And you need people that, that you try that, to pray with you. I, we, we all have done it. All right, but here it says the minister prays in the name of Jesus. I, you know, I, I, I say I command the spirit of rejection, you know, to or fear of reject whatever you're dealing with, to come out in Jesus' name. I no longer align with you. I don't submit myself to you. I command my freedom now in Jesus' name, and and you don't have any legal right. The enemy can't stay against your will. You don't have any legal right. Get out in Jesus' name, and I demand my freedom. And see, you have to be determined to walk in, in, in freedom. And so basically, you know, that would be some prayer when we're focusing on a spirit of rejection, you know. And so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to read the prayer. Pray it along with me. And, um, you know, I may change the wording around a little bit. But just, 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 you know, pray with me. And just if there's anything, ask Holy Spirit if there's anything in your life. It might be in your kid's life. It might be in your employee's life. You know, it might be in people that you know, but, but I always go before the Lord because, listen, there's still times that, that there's something, you know, and you'll feel that intimidation come on you or you'll feel that, like, ooh, icky spirit. A lot of times you're, you're sensing what that person's operating in, but what happens is you're taking it on yourself. And that I've learned to do now because, you know, how sometimes you can be perfectly fine walking into the room and all of a sudden you're feeling really insecure and intimidated. Like, what in the world just happened? Yeah. You're picking up. You're discerning what is in the room. Right, and, and we'll teach on discerning of spirits. But, but I, I, there's, I would get so depressed. I think so many people that are even, like, struggling with depression and are on meds, it's because they're so sensitive in the spirit realm. They haven't learned. or They're not Christian. They're not identifying with the spirit realm. And they're, they're picking up something. And they're thinking it's them and it's not. So that's another thing. If you're sensing that and you're really starting to try, ask the Lord, is it me? Because I was totally fine. Or am I picking up something? Now, don't go up to the person and just start, ask the Holy Spirit if it's okay for you to say something to that person. But, but you know, like learn how to operate in this. And, and like I said, we'll, we'll, we'll give you guidelines in dealing with that. But that has helped me tremendously. 
um, with working with myself and with others. All right. So we're going to pray. All right. So just say in Jesus name, I renounce and I come out of agreement with a generational spirit of rejection that has been passed down through my ancestors. I forgive my ancestors for this open door and I renounce it and I reject it. I renounce all forms of rejection, fear of rejection, self rejection, perceived rejection and expected rejection. Okay. And then if you, uh, I'll pause here for a moment. And if, if there's any, um, remembrance of any situation that occurred in your life that you can think of right now, just bring it before the Lord. You don't have to say it out loud, but just bring it before the Lord. Cause it's really important that you do that right now. And it could be something that you may think is minor, but that little minor thing, the little foxes are what spoil the vine is what's holding you in bondage. And then even practice this at home with not only spirit of rejection, anything that's hurt you. <clears throat> All right. So you can say, I renounce and reject the spirit of rejection as you have no authority over my life. I close every door against the spirit of rejection and I cancel every legal right that rejection has had to operate in my life. And I command the spirit of rejection, generational curse of rejection, fear of rejection, self rejection, perceived rejection and expected rejection to loose their hold on me now in Jesus name. Now you can just sit there and I'll pray. Now in Jesus name, I take authority over a spirit of rejection and generational curse of rejection, self rejection, expected rejection and perceived rejection. I command you in Jesus name to loose your hold on, on the children of God right now in Jesus name, your legal right has been taken from, from them right now in Jesus' name. And I loose the power of the blood of Jesus. And I decree that no weapon of rejection formed against them will prosper, for this is their inheritance in you, O oh God. Now, Lord, I just thank you for freedom. I thank you, Lord, for your uprooting any root system of rejection. I thank you for cleansing them. Lord, I thank you that they are accepted in the Beloved. And we bind every lying spirit and we forbid you from tormenting them in Jesus name. And we loose the spirit of truth over their lives. And we say, Lord, you are the spirit of truth and your truth prevails and your, your truth destroys the work of the enemy in Jesus name. Now, Lord, I just thank you for the power of your blood. And I thank you, Father, that that spirit of rejection in, in our lives have been exposed. And, Lord, you said that we can speak to that root and we pull that root out and we demand and we decree complete deliverance and freedom in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Amen. Now, again, like I said uh, yet last week, you know, a lot of times when you're praying for deliverance for yourself or for others, you can um, sometimes you feel like you want to burp, laugh, yawn, nothing. Um, but sometimes, you know, we'll tell people cough just, just because it, it's a spirit, let it out. And sometimes you just feel like a weight coming off of you. You don't have to have a manifestation because we have learned, I learned the hard way that when we bring people through breaking inner vows and bitter root judgments and break, go through unforgiveness, we don't have them crazy uh, manifestations. But a lot of times when you're getting free, you just feel that oh, to release it or to cough. Or we were just meeting with somebody and the person looks at me and, you know, spirits mock you. And he's like, oh, my God, I'm, he, he just burst out laughing. And that's a spirit. A mocking spirit wants to laugh at what you're doing. Don't pay attention. Just come in to be quiet and get out. And so there are different, there are different things. So you, you can review your notes from last week, but coughing, yawning. So we, I've ministered to people where their eyes roll back and they just... You know, you thought maybe they died or, or look, they look like they're going to, they just want to fall asleep on you. 
uh, or they roll back and fall down. I mean, you just, you just, it's that spirit not wanting to leave that individual. And so that can happen. So um, anyway, but, you know, again, the enemy likes a show. And he wants you to focus on that. We don't, mm -mm, we're like, oh, no, 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 we're not having that. And so we'll just really um, a deal with that sphere. Yeah, I just want to encourage, I know there was a lot of people watching online tonight. And this might be new for you. Um, and I guess the warning would be that there could be some things stirred up that you haven't thought about in a long time. And that could cause like a flight mechanism to kick in because you're not familiar with that feeling. So we would just encourage you to pray through that. Have a good friend that you know is mature and grounded in the word that loves you and knows you that you can talk to about things or keep a journal. We found that's a really helpful thing to keep a journal because if you remember as a child, we used to play a game called connect the dots, connect the numbers. And when you looked at the pattern, you couldn't tell what it was, but then one dot to two to three to four, and then all of a sudden it would start to appear. And that's how this seems to be for a lot of people. If you had trauma when you were younger, there's a, another thing that happens in your body that just causes you to keep functioning even though you had that terrible thing happen and it'll just sit in the back of your unconscious. But as the Lord senses that you're willing to, to go down and, and find some of those things, he'll, he'll start to release some of those things for you. It won't, you know, it won't be overwhelming or it doesn't have to be overwhelming. It might feel that way initially, but it's just an echo. It's not the real thing that's happening, but it can feel very real. So you just want to walk through it and try not to bail on the process. And that's when it really helps to have somebody that you know loves you to, to pray through these things with you. Because the devil doesn't like to let go, right? But he has to bow to the authority of the name of the Lord, right? It's the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and they are safe and saved. So you're, um, the, the feelings that you're having are real, but they're not grounded in truth. They're grounded in the lie that you believed about yourself. So that's my encouragement is to, to try to not allow your feelings to stop you from, from going on this journey, but also don't think that you have to find everything out in day one. It's progressive. And if you just start to do the little things right each day, You'll, you'll notice a great momentum will start to build. And then boy, when you start getting free and those things don't have a hold of you anymore, then you know the power of God is, is strong enough. So now that next thing could become a little bit easier and the next after that. So that's our encouragement to you is just don't be too hard on yourself because that can happen when you have self-rejection. You think, I'm not going to be any good at this, right? So you automatically assume that it's going to take longer for you than somebody else. Don't do that to yourself. Just just uh, allow yourself to plug into the process of God and, and don't put any uh, too great demands on yourself. He's really good at helping you walk through this process.